It's Dorm Room Sports Chat. I'm your host, Joey Petrella. Along with Go AZ Cats reporters Evan Murray and Danny Passavoy. Along with the color commentator for Arizona Wildcat Hockey, Nick Nolenberg. This is Dorman Sports Channel. Welcome to episode three of Dorman Sports Chat, and thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Joey Petrello, and once again, I'm joined by Go AZ Cats reporters Danny Passavoy and Evan Murray, along with the color commentator for Wildcat Hockey, Nick Nolenberger. Tonight, our analysts will decide if Arizona basketball is back on track, talk about what we learned from Arizona baseball this weekend, I'll give you the cat scratch, and we'll close things off with a game of fill-in-the-blank and 30 seconds. All right, let's talk a little bit of Arizona basketball now. The basketball team must have used last week's DRSC discussion about them as motivation because they steamrolled both teams' face since last Sunday. Last Wednesday, the Wildcats blew out Washington 70-52 to and repeated that performance in a 73-56 win over Washington State yesterday. All right, so Evan, what did you notice about the team's play this week that was so different from last week? Well, I think, I mean, kind of all the logistics of everything, they played like a team, and, I mean, that's what we were all looking for, I think. The, the chemistry was there. They were having fun. Even Solomon said something after the game. We finally just got back to having fun, and that's really what that looked like. I mean, and then you had 10 guys in rotation, and I think the bigger rotation gives them, I mean, it does something for chemistry, I think. You have Gabe York getting minutes, and then you have Chul getting minutes. And then also, I mean, I noticed, um, I mean, with Kevin Parham in the starting lineup, two helps. Johnson's playing more of a point guard role, and for some reason, I think that's working for them because, I mean, he has more assists than Mark Lyons have been getting. Last Against Washington State, he had six assists, two turnovers. Um, against Washington, five assists, three turnovers, which isn't great. And then before that, four assists, zero turnovers. So... I mean, I think it has a little bit to do with his confidence that in shooting <clears throat> that is kind of leading to him fulfilling that role, but I think it's working. Tempo, tempo, tempo. That's the name of the game. That's what it is in college basketball. And honestly, it starts with Nick Johnson. When Nick Johnson's playing up to his potential, Pushing when he comes off. out right out of the gate, pounding guys, playing tight defense, blacking their best player, the team feeds off of it. Yeah. And what the Wildcats need to do, what they didn't do in the second half against Washington State, is keep the tempo up for not the last five minutes of the game, not the first five minutes of the second half, but all 40 minutes of the game. Right. And that's what they did against Washington, and they had that blowout win that they need. The team needs those blowout wins to say, you know what, we're confident. We can do that to teams. Right. And Washington's a pretty decent team. They shut down their center for two points. Tempo, 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 40 minutes of the game. That's what's changed in the last week. Yeah, I mean, and then, I mean, you're, you're right in the tempo aspect, but with all of that, I think it's all of them having the energy to, like, push that tempo. Tempo, sorry. And um, I'm definitely with you there. So, um, besides Washington State, I think that they struggled a little bit in the second half, started to go back to a few weeks ago with the second half woes, but I think they, I mean, Sean Miller, I know, wasn't happy at all after the Washington State game. You would have thought that his team just lost, but um, I definitely think it's an improvement from last week, hugely, obviously. I, th I think he was so upset after the Washington State loss because, or after they beat Washington State, is because they came out so hot in the first half. Right. They played some tight defense, Best defense I've seen since ASU. Right. They played great defense. We're moving the ball around, driving, dishing, finding open guys. In the second half, they came out flat. Yeah. Defense wasn't there. They were playing lazy. They forced a few passes. And then they finally found it a little bit towards the end of the game. But they had, they showed everything that they can do, and then they just stopped playing. I think that's why he was so mad after the game. I think I would be too. Right, and I think that almost kind of goes hand, it's weird because it almost goes hand in hand with the confidence part because I think they they started to feel like a team, started to feel that confidence, and then they kind of thought because it's Washington State that they can kind of start to slack off, which, I mean, I think that's just a learning experience then because Sean Miller obviously, I'm sure, got into him after it that, you know, like regardless of if, you're really feeling your team, and your team really feels like it's there. You have to keep playing. So, 
I mean, and then also a big aspect of the different, the change in the team. I think the freshmen aren't freshmen anymore, and I, and that's been stressed a lot. Is it's the end of your freshman season. You you're not counted as a freshman anymore. And if you play like one, I mean, Caleb had a season high of 12 points, so that was pretty big for him. And I just think all together that just definitely builds the chemistry in general. All right, so Nick, Evan just mentioned Kevin Parham was inserted into the lineup, and I, I want to know how you feel about that. How do you think that putting Parham into the starting lineup has made Arizona a stronger team? Well, initially, Joe, I think they put him in just to add that, add that kind of veteran presence. It wasn't too impressive to start um, since dating back almost a month and a half, dating back to ASU, he's uh, only been averaging about uh, 19 points a game. He's only, been five, he's only uh, had five three-pointers. So against Washington uh, State, it was a, quite a breakout for Parham, the senior, going uh, hitting six threes. So um, I think this is the point uh, where the veterans starting to step up. It's a big game. I know he had one of his uh, – he probably had the best game out of all the Wildcats. So just building confidence. It's good to get him going, definitely. Um, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully continue this uh, hot streak. Definitely a good, uh, good shot from uh, behind the arc for sure, though. Yeah, I agree with you on the fact that he just brings that um, veteran pr presence. But I also think, I mean, having a guy like him in the starting lineup, energy, heart, always – I mean, he always plays hard. We all know that. Um, but, yeah, he – Sean Miller said he was playing a little tight recently and that – he was almost trying too hard because it is his last few games of his career. So I think that played a little bit into why he was playing tight and wasn't playing very well. Clearly, he loosened up a bit. Um, I mean, he had 19 points and seven rebounds against Washington State. So, I mean, clearly he has a positive impact on this starting lineup. And I think altogether you kind of have seen the team blossom from that if you will. I mean, I mean, there, there are a lot of reasons why you put Kevin Parham in the starting lineup. One, he's a senior. He's gone in a few weeks. You put him in. These are his last few games. You know that he's going to give it his all. Right. You, you absolutely know that. Two, he's aggressive. And, and he's, he's what Brandon Ashley could be but hasn't been yet. He's aggressive. He attacks the hoop. And he moves off ball. And he gets open. And he hits the shots when he needs to hit yeah. the shots. So there are a lot of reasons why you play Kevin Perry. He also plays pretty good defense. Not the best defense on the team, but he plays pretty good defense. There are a lot of reasons why you'd play him. Overall, I think Brandon Ashley is a better talent. I think Brandon Ashley has a higher got, ceiling. He's That's got a thing. much higher ceiling. Yeah, because you brought up a really good point comparing Kevin and um, Brandon in a way. It's just that Brandon has that higher ceiling, but you haven't been able to see that this fresh. I mean, this his freshman year. But I mean. It's endless for him as far as I'm concerned, but I do agree Kevin is the more aggressive person to put in the starting lineup versus Brandon. I, I'd say that now. Right, and that's what I'd I'm saying. Say his ceiling is... If Brandon Ashley were to stay until his senior year, oh, I, th but I, he, think, I think he's the best player in the Pac-12, like without a doubt. He's got all the tools that you need. He's got all the tools that you need from a three. He's aggressive. Right. He can hit shots. He can hit the 17-footer. He could create his own shot, hit the baseline shot. He could do everything. He just hasn't shown it to the, t to the full of his potential yet. Yeah, right. I think yeah, at this point it's pretty clear that Coach Miller just wanted to go with the better. You know, he wants to get that confidence. And we've, we've mentioned it all year that they've struggled to blow out teams. They've struggled to separate themselves. They have the most talent in the Pac-12. And Coach Miller was just trying to get a spark. You know, put the veteran in, see what he can do. And just try to, you know, in practice, he's leading, he's leading most of these practices. It's rare to have these older guys on these teams. And sometimes you've got to take advantage of it. He's just, it just seems like he's trying to get a spark. And it looks like it might have worked against uh, Washington State. Yeah, and I think the spark even led to, I mean, Brandon Ashley playing better. Because, I mean, Brandon Ashley was getting less minutes um, a few weeks back and kind of producing less. And then all of a sudden Kevin gets a starting job and now he's putting up the stat line. So I definitely agree with you. Kevin Perrin brings the spark to this team. Well, the, the person that Kevin Perrin being in the lineup that has helped most is Caleb Tarzuski. Having, having Kevin Perrin in the lineup, a veteran presence on the outside who can drive – creates millions of opportunities for Caleb Tarzewski. Yeah. One, like, Kevin Parham doesn't force passes. No. That's, that's not what his, he does. Nick Johnson forces passes. Kevin Parham makes the smart plays 95% of the time. Mark Lyons forces passes. Mark Lyons forces passes, too, and he can't dribble between defenders. 
But Kevin Perrin makes smart pass passes and he makes smart plays. And that's creating open opportunities for Caleb. And I think those opportunities are building his confidence. Yeah. So oh, I, I think all, all in all, Kevin Perrin is the right move to play right now. But if I were building a team, probably have Brandon Ashley in the starting lineup. But this is the smart move for the Wildcats right, right now. now. All right, Danny, so it, it, it's a very tight race <clears throat> between Arizona, Oregon, and UCLA in the Pac-12 standings, especially Arizona and Oregon because both of their record in Pac-12 play is 11-4, and four, so they're both tied right now in there. So who uh, or which of those three teams are going to come out on top? I mean, Arizona's schedule is not that easy no. in these last uh, three or four games that they're playing. Oregon's got a little bit easier. Who's going to come out on top? Honestly, it could be Cal right now. Cal's the hottest team in the Pac-12. They just beat Oregon. They whooped Arizona. Alan Crabb is playing out of his mind. I think he's by far the best player in the Pac-12. They're only a game out. They're only a game out. They could definitely make a run at the Pac-12 uh, title. However, Arizona, if they're able to go into L.A., sweep UCLA and USC, they win out. Oregon still has to play Colorado. I think, I think Arizona has a very good chance of winning the Pac-12 championship. I agree with you. I actually, this week, <laughs> I have hope in Arizona. Um, I think Arizona does have, I mean, UCLA is not going to be an easy game. And as far as rivalries go, it's up in the air as far as your record, like where it is. So I believe that ASU and the U of A game is pretty up in the air. Um, UCLA kind of the same. But I do believe Arizona can pull it out. Um, UCLA kind of has a tough schedule left. Um, they play ASU, Arizona, at Washington, which we've obviously heard great things about Washington at home, um, and then Washington State. So I think that they have a little bit harder of a run. I'm fond of UCLA. I think that they have – if Arizona doesn't have the best talent, I think UCLA has the best talent. Um, but I'm, not, I'm going with Arizona, actually. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean – we keep talking about, I don't have confidence in the Arizona team in general. I have confidence in the talent. So, you know, all year we've been, you, you, every time they go out there, you expect them to win. And unfortunately, they haven't been able to blow out anybody this year. They've only had two blowouts in the whole Pac-12. So, I mean, talent-wise, I expect them to win every single game. You just don't know what you're going to get from them. So, I mean, two, two wins in a row. We'll see. Hopefully, they can conti continue it and, uh, you know, win this, win this thing. So. Yeah, hopefully that team chemistry that we're seeing hopefully doesn't die back down, which I can't, I can't imagine that would be happening. If you're going to get it together, I'd assume it's for the long stretch, but then again. If, if, if Arizona doesn't win, I'm picking Cal. If, if Arizona goes into UCLA loses, Cal wins out. They have the tiebreaker over Arizona. They have the tiebreaker over Oregon, and they have the tiebreaker over UCLA. They win out. Arizona loses to UCLA, Oregon maybe to Colorado. Cal's your Pac-12 champion. So it, it's pretty up in the air right now. I think it's between Arizona and Cal. All right, well, thanks for the insight, analysts. I can't wait to see how this all plays out. And don't leave us yet, though, because next we're going to talk Arizona baseball. You're watching Dorman Sports Chat on UATV3. I'm Derek Williams, the former U of A Wildcat. You're watching UATV. Don't change the channel. someone they see on a media and trying to sell newspapers. Those extra few hours of having to swipe your cat card to get in at night might be keeping non-U of A students out of the library. And while some are traveling to Mexico for cheaper gas, others are forced to pay those high prices at the pump. Students and parents are always invited to come cheer on the Wildcats. We'll see you back here next week for another edition of Wildcast. Welcome back to DRSC and thanks for watching. The number 10 Arizona baseball team has a hot 7-1 start to the season. Earlier today, they capped off a weekend sweep at High Corbett Field over San Jose State. Alright, so Evan, the series against San Jose State went 
a whole lot better than earlier in the week when the Wildcats traveled to Long Beach State. And can you explain why? Well, playing at home obviously plays a huge role. They won the last 14 at home. Um, also, Lopez said they were much more competitive against San Jose State, um, and he didn't like the way they came out versus Long Beach. So, I mean, and then also I think that they're just trying to click together as a team, learn how to play with each other. So, as far as I'm concerned, that's where it starts. Well, th this team still has to find its identity, and, that, and that's kind of what Andy Lopez has been praising or preaching the last few weeks. This team still has to find its identity. Uh, there are going to be some bumps in the road. You got, you got Kevin Newman, a new shortstop. Uh, you got a bunch of younger guys, Scott Kingery in the lineup, Cody Raymer playing a pretty big role, Cody Moffitt, a, bunch, a new pitcher. Uh, this team still has to click. That's just what happens. There's going to be errors. They're gonna, these pitchers are going to give up runs early in the game like Steven Manthe did today. And that's just what happens. They're a young team on the rise, coming off a national championship year, a lot of guys to replace. But you have to – you're going to have those faults early in the season. And so you just got to build from that. I think they were just much more competitive this weekend. Uh, they played their hearts out every single game. They were down – they were down early in this one, came back, scored nine runs between the seventh and the eighth. That's the kind of heart that you love to see with a younger team. So I think they just have to still find their identity, and I think they will in the next coming weeks. All right, so Nick, speaking of Steven Manthe, he was a lot better in his second start rather than his first. And I want to know what you think, what, he, what did he do better today than he did last Sunday? Well, last Sunday, like we mentioned, he was pulled after the third inning. We were talking about maybe Andy Lopez questioning if he's a legit Sunday starter. A much better outing today. That's actually the best start of probably his career, longest start of his career, um, longest start in over two years. So much improved. I think he just settled down. He let up some early runs, uh, let some runs up early, and uh, was able to settle down the game going uh, seven and two-thirds. So definitely a solid start for him. Makes me feel a lot more confident having him in, in on Sundays. So uh, Definitely a major improvement, but you know, just settle down in the game. Let up some runs early, but able to settle down. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're gonna have those early season jitters, especially for Manthe, who, who hasn't started a weekend game. I mean, last weekend was his first one in his career, so he's gonna have those preseason jitters heading into opening week. However, he found his location today, and that's what and that's what mattered. He was pinpointing that fastball, working that slider to the outside of the plate and getting guys to whiff, getting guys to whiff on balls in the dirt, getting guys to whiff on a high cheese fastball. That was working pretty well today. So I think it was all location for Manthe, and you know what, he, he crushed it today. An another thing about that is that I was a, a little bit surprised to see how well he pitched today rather than against Coppin State, who went 1-53 in last season. I, I can't find a way to explain that. You know, you know, it, it doesn't really matter whether you're playing a 1-53 and team or a reigning national championship team in the first weekend. It's opening weekend. You're going to have some bumps in the road. Steve Manthe, I talked to him after the game today, and he just basically said, once you give up a run, it's over. You have to look past it, and, that, and he was having trouble doing that last Sunday. So I said, I gave up a run in the first inning today. I looked past it, focused on the next hitters. And I got the job done today, and that's exactly what he did. Yep, the best the best athletes are gonna have to, you know, they have to have a short memory. And like you mentioned, had a sh rough start, but that was like they just won the World Series. They're celebrating the World Series, first series of the year at home. You know, everybody's fired up. Jitters, like you mentioned, that's his first start on Sunday. So you know, it's all about jitters. It's all about getting confident. It's early in the season. If you're gonna have your bumps, it's it's a good time to have it. So you're, you know, you're much a, better start. You're a starting pitcher. Your job is to get as many guys out as you can. However. You're a starting pitcher. You're going to give up runs. That's your job. And it happens. That's baseball. So I, I thought it was a great start for Manthe, a great way for him to get his first win of the season. And I think he's going to hold on to that Sunday role at least for a long, at least for the next few weeks. All right. So also, Danny, it, it took six innings until the Cats were able to even push across their first hit in the seventh with no outs. And especially considering uh, Saturday's game where they were just pounding that that pitching, why did it take the offense so long to get things going today? Uh, Spartan pitcher DJ Slayton was on his game today. His fastball was in the mid to low 90s. I think he got clocked out at 93 was his highest today. He was on fire. His stuff was dirty. His fastball was everywhere he wanted it to go, everywhere the catcher lined up. Uh, I, think, I think the Wildcats were just having a little hard time catching up today, but they came on in the, 
In the seventh inning, Riley Moore base hit through the right side of the infield to spark the rally. Scored five runs, four run, four more runs in the in the eighth inning. Ended up scoring nine runs. Tagged Slayton for four, I think, on the game. So, so I think he, Slayton was just on fire. And you know what? Andy Lopez after the game basically told me he's just like, look, doesn't matter how the rest of the eight guys on defense play if the small guy in the circle in the middle of the field is playing well. It's going to be a good game. So, all in all, good weekend series for the Wildcats. Able to sweep 7-1. and one. It's looking good so far. All right, well, thanks for the insight there, Dan. Uh, when we come back, we're going to give you the cat scratch, and uh, we're going to play a little game of fill in the blank as well, so you're not going to miss that. You're watching Dorman Sports Chat on UATV3. All right, David Hassel off the hop. Get off with UATV. Stay tuned. Don't change the dial. That's how I should be at basketball, dude. I should just do that. I shouldn't say anything. The left I lead is the top of a dog. I may have fleas, but I run a yard. I see those clones looking down on me. But unlike those clones, this dog is free. All right, it's a dog side. All right, it's a dog side. Hey folks, welcome back. DRSC now presents the Cat Scratch. The Arizona baseball team completed their weekend home sweep over San Jose State today with a 9-4 victory. Steven Manthe picked up his first win of the season after going seven and two-thirds innings and giving up three runs. The women's basketball team fell to rival Arizona State 59-58 on the road. Senior Davlin White scored 18 points, grabbed 12 rebounds, and posted seven assists for the Wildcats. And in men's tennis, the Wildcats claimed their victories on all nine of their home courts and route to a seven-love victory over DePaul. All right, analysts, let's play a little fill-in-the-blank here. So fill in this blank for me. The prospect who has impressed most in the NFL Combine thus far has been... I'll go uh, Ryan Swoop from Texas A&M, the receiver. Kind of, uh, he's a slot receiver, a little bit of a smaller guy. I think he's projected maybe like a late second, third round kind of guy. And uh, ran a 4-3-4. So that's going to boost him up. you got to imagine he's going to go maybe uh, mid-second. But pretty impressive. You never know with these guys. There's always that guy that kind of surprises you, runs a real quick 40 time. Everybody kind of raises those eyebrows and has to go uh, recheck the film. So I was pretty impressed by uh, Ryan Swoop. I'm going to go with another flashy one, uh, Marquise Goodwin wide receiver out of Texas. Um, he ran a 4.2740 yard dash. So that was pretty impressive. Um, I forget exactly, it was like 0 .0 second um, from the record. I don't, I don't know exactly what it was, but point it was zero extreme. Second. No, point like zero there was a record. second, there was like, I think it was like 0 .05. A fraction of a second. A fraction. Yeah, it was a fraction of a second. Okay. Sorry guys, I didn't take very much math, but. Um, um, that was a flashy one for me. <laughs> okay, great. All right, <laughs> let me step in here. Uh, uh, I got two guys who really impressed me so far in the NFL Combine. This is day four. Uh, Ontario McCaleb from Auburn. Never had more than 800 rushing yards in a season. Came in, ran the 40 today, 4-2-1. What an incredible score for the guy from Auburn. He's a small guy, but he's going to get picked up pretty early for teams that need to scat back. Uh, you also got Tavon Austin, one of the best athletes in the draft. Ran a 4-3-4 as well. Chris Routes over at West Virginia, uh, opposite side of the field, and Stedman Bailey and Geno Smith. Uh, Tavon Austin, one of the most sound receivers that you're going to see in this draft, one of, the most, one of the quickest receivers you'll see in this draft. He's also got some great routes, and I think he could be a very valuable player for an NFL team. Yeah, he's at one of those Deshaun Jackson types, and they have him projected maybe 20 to 30. You run a 4-3-4. That secures up any any question that he wasn't fast enough. So I'd imagine he's going to go anywhere from like 15 to 20. I don't I don't imagine him slipping beyond that. Guy's quick. You know, he uh, made uh, Geno Smith look pretty good. Geno could be the number one pick in the draft. So 
definitely a prospect to look out for. I mean, I mean, you sent him, you sent, you sent Tavon Austin over to Jacksonville. You got Justin Blackman on the outside, Tavon Austin hitting up the slot on the inside, on the right side of the field. It's a pretty good wide receiver core that you're starting to build around Blaine Gabbert or uh, Chad Henney. So he could go pretty high in the draft. All right, well, thanks, analysts. Uh, I, I can't wait till the NFL draft comes up in, uh, in a couple months. So when we return, we're going to close this episode with a quick game of 30 seconds. You're watching Dorm Room Sports Chat on UATV3. Come game time, pressure falls on the shoulders of this season's drum major. For an entire week, there's golfing, food, drinks, and entertainment that doesn't stop when the sun goes down. If you are not yet registered to vote, here's what an Arizona voter registration form looks like. Bundle up Wildcats, winter is almost here. Reporting from the UA Mall for Wildcats, I'm Shay Thornton. All right, everyone, it's that time for a quick game of 30 seconds where Evan, Nick, and Danny each have 30 seconds to voice one of their opinions about any topic in sports. Evan, yours last week was the Kansas basketball team Harlem Shake. I hope it's better this week, so you're leading off. Go ahead. Jackson Cartwright. Um, he's a 2014 point guard who just committed to Arizona, which is a big deal. Sean Miller actually just talked about a few press conferences ago, I lose track, um, that getting a point guard in the 2014 class was very important. But not only does he bring himself, but I know Justice Winslow, who's a five-star recruit, and Stanley Johnson, a five-star recruit, are very, they're all pretty good friends. So, And I know that they'd all want to play together, so that's a big factor in him coming here, not only himself, but convincing other guys too as well. All right, good stuff, Evan. Nick, tell them what's good. Well, I'm gonna talk about this weekend, it was ASU U of A hockey, and it was quite an exciting weekend. Unfortunately, the Cats fell both times. On Friday night, they fell 2-1, and on Saturday, it was 3-1, a late uh, empty net goal by Arizona State. But 32 consecutive losses to Arizona State, which is just horrible, but a packed, sold-out crowd on Saturday, the first time in 10 years. And you could definitely sense the energy in the building. It was really fun. Me and Joey, I had the call. So, great weekend of hockey. Unfortunately, the Cats fell uh, short. And I just... A couple sections early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the first time that's ever happened. But anyway, right. I can't wait to call next season's games as well with you, Nick. It was a great season. All right, Dan, Aww. slam the door. <laughs> cute. Aww. All right, uh, I'm yeah, going to talk about... Cute. I'm going to talk about... <laughs> Uh, Dan Hicks coming to speak to UA Journalism students at the University of Arizona. Dan Hicks, one of the journalism department's proudest alums. He's now an NBC broadcaster, broadcasting mostly golf. However, he's done uh, Olympics since 1994, including all the calls for the Michael Phelps swimming series. Uh, overall, a great guy, one of the best broadcasters in the business. And I just want to give him a shout out. Thank him for coming to talk to us. And he's been a real inspiration so far. All right, great stuff, guys. Really good 30 seconds this week. Make sure you all tune in again next week for another exciting episode. So for our analysts, I'm Joey Petrello. Thank you for watching us. And remember, you are watching Dorm Room Sports Chat on UATV3. See you next Sunday.